All right, in this video, we're going to talk about equivalent fractions and cross products. I'm basically using cross, multiply, and divide to figure out a type of equivalent fraction. Before we get there, what is an equivalent fraction? Equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same overall value. If I have 2 fourths and I divide 2 by 4, if it gives me a decimal, it would be 0 0.5. Uh, 1 half, 1 divided by 2 would, once again, 0.5. So I could say that 2 fourths <clears throat> is equal to 1 half. And if I'm looking at it from a different perspective, if I look at numerators as they go to numerators and denominators as they go to denominators, or vice versa, going from the smaller to the larger, 1 times 2 gives me 2. Well, 2 times 2 gives me 4. So as you can see, they are equivalent. It's just uh, one is a more simplified version of the other. So that's how an equivalent fraction works. Uh, what we, uh, what you can determine, or what you can figure out as you look deeper into it, so say 3 fifths <clears throat> and 6 tenths. They're the same. 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 2 is 10. But if we look at the cross products, which would be multiplying numbers that are on a diagonal, so the denominator, for instance, of the first fraction and the numerator of the other, 6 times 5, I can actually see that if I do the numerator of the first one times the denominator of the second one, I get 30 in both cases. We can use that to our advantage. That's the idea of cross products. In the end of all things, most people refer to this concept as cross multiply and divide. So say I wanted to do 2 fifths, and I wanted to go up to 15. I mean, this is pretty easy in, <clears throat> in the most, because you could just do 5 times 3 and say, OK, it's 15. So what's 2 times 3? Well, it's 6. If you wanted to use cross products to do it, oops, it doesn't help if you write the answer down. That doesn't really lead to a problem. The problem is it's already answered. So. If I want to set it up this way, I'll do 2 times 15 is equal to 5 times something else. And we'll just put an x here, maybe, and write 5 times x. I'll do 2 times 5 is 30 is equal to 5x. And to get rid of this division times the x, because I'm trying to get the x by itself, I'm going to divide and say, OK, it's really 30 divided by 5, or 6, just like I thought before, just like like this. I'll do one more. <clears throat> Excuse me. So say I have two ninths, and I want to know, well, what happens when it's 60 thirds? How many 60 thirds am I looking for? Um, you could just say, well, 9 times 7 is 63, and then what's 2 times 7? That works. Or I could do 63 times 2. And uh, I should say that multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter if you put 2 times 63 or 63 times 2. That's irrelevant. Um, and then 9 times question mark. So when I do 63 times 2, I end up with 126 times 9, or equals 9 times something. But I want to get the multiply by itself, so in order to get rid of times 9, I'll just divide by 9, because 9 divided by 9 is 1, which would make it 1 question mark. So I'm still left with a question mark over here. But if I do something to one side of an equation, I have to do it to the other as well. And I end up with 14. So I can say that 2 ninths is the same as 14. 60 thirds. So that's how you use equivalent or find equivalent fractions using cross products. Not too overly taxing, but uh, you know, it's actually pretty useful in the end of all things in other realms as well.